On this video, we're going to wrap up our 70 Nova we have here in the garage. A couple things we're going to try to accomplish on this video. The first thing, we're going to fix this upper dash, dashboard. Uh, there's a bunch of rust when we pulled the windshield out, so we're going to put a new piece there. The one we have is slightly different, but I believe we can modify it. Uh, we're then going to fix this uh, custom dented firewall that when this was a drag car, someone tried to make clearance for the distributor, and now that's going back as a show car. Motor's going to have plenty of clearance, so we're going to straighten that out. After that, we'll go ahead and strip uh, the fenders on both sides. There's the trim holes we're going to end up welding up front to back since the rest of the body has no trim. I know there's some rust down here and some filler. You can see it coming off. Um, hopefully that's the only rust on these fenders. We haven't looked at them really close, but we'll see when we strip them down. Then we're going to go ahead and assemble our radiator support, our inner fenders, the front cowl here, and a new hood. So stay tuned for that. I think we're going to wrap up the video by then, cutting out a couple supports on our frame jig, and then we're going to install subframe connectors uh, to tie in the front subframe to the rear chassis, just stiffen up the car a little bit. We're going to do this after we finish all the body lines and adjustments because that's what's going to tighten up the car and hold it in place. We'd hate for this car not to not be able to get the body lines adjusted right or, you know, we tighten the subframe connectors first and then we can't adjust anything because the car's slightly off. So, car's going to be perfect. We're going to have it on the frame jig. We'll put the subframe connectors on. We'll get the car off the frame jig, hopefully epoxy the rest of the car and I'll do a walk around video before it heads to its new owner. So stay tuned, we'll see what we can do with this car and we'll finish it out. The first step in this process, now that we got the fenders unbolted back from the car, we'll go ahead and strip off all the old paint and everything else that's on these fenders and get them down to bare metal and see what we're looking for. I'm using the Eastwood SCT with a black stripping drum. To me, this is the easiest way to remove paint, filler, everything else without warping the fenders or putting too much heat on it. Coming around the wheel arch, you can see where this fender, it looks like it's been hit at some point and someone's really worked on it. There's a ton of filler here. You can see where they're sticking a slide hammer and trying to pull back, trying to pull the dent out of this thing. So this is something we're gonna have to address on this fender. Also, down in that corner, along with this fender, you could see the rust holes where they start from. That was the main reason we knew we would have to do some work on these fenders and we got these lower patches. I'm removing the trim, going down the side of the fender, and we're gonna go ahead and, with the same thing we did on the other fender, and strip off everything on this fender down to bare metal. Same process with this Eastwood SCT. Once we have both fenders and bare metal, we'll go ahead and weld up the trim molding side holes. We're not going to need them anymore. The owner's not keeping any more molding going on outside the car. So I'm just using a TIG welder, 16th inch lanthanated tungsten, 16th inch filler rod, and just quickly stepping on a pedal and filling the hole. I think this is the best way to keep the heat out of it and gives you the nicest, cleanest surface when it's all said and done. We'll run back through with a sanding belt with a little 80 grit and just clean up the fenders and I'm tapping them up with a hammer and dolly if I need to where the heat just got a little bit much and just leveling everything out. When doing this and it's finished, you should need very little bit of glazing putty to just skim coat any slight imperfections, mostly from the sanding. Here's another angle of the welding. Same thing, we're on the other fender now and just taking the front, hitting the pedal a couple times, keeping the heat out of it, feeding the rod in a little bit more aggressive since we are filling a hole and then holding the gas over it, letting it cool down, and then moving on to the next hole that needs filling. I'm about 45 amps on the TIG welder with a number five cup. The welded surface also was prepped and cleaned with acetone, just to make sure we have a better weld with that kind of 
preparation, the cleanup process just comes out so much better in the long run. You can see there are some other holes in this fender. They will stay there for these little side vents and then there's 350 emblems and also the Nova badging. So we are gonna leave all that. Again, we're just covering up the trim molding front to rear that went down the side of the door and on the quarters. Since we replaced the door skins and quarters, we didn't have to weld up the, the holes on those panels. Now that we have the trim holes welded up, We'll go ahead and address the rest of the bodywork needed on this fender. We're using this tool that's called the Ox by Coach Smithing. It's a handheld flanishing hammer, and really, the amount of work it would take for your hand using a hammer and dolly, this tool will just smooth right over it. You see, I'm using the dolly as a backing, and I'm running the flanishing hammer, and I'm squeezing it between my hands and just smoothing out any imperfections high and lows on there and it works so fast it's a very quality tool I highly recommend it I've only had it for a few months but the couple of jobs I used I couldn't have been happier after the flashing hammer we're going to turn our attention to lower corner rust spots you see there was just a bunch of filler packed in this rust hole the bracket behind it is also rusted so we're just outlining where well, i'm using the smallest patch the whole fender we have a whole lower fender patch that goes about four or five inches above this bend just because you have a whole patch doesn't mean you have to use it i like to sometimes go ahead and either find a nice place to cut in the patch or right here there really wasn't that great of an area to cut in the patch so to me it was easier to just take the smallest section and work against the line across the top and then go as narrow as possible to keep our patch on the back portion of the fender i went and i clamped everything in place and we're just tacking the patch panel in place with the tig welder i've said it in the past i really like the tig welder on all exterior body parts it gives a softer weld that you can hammer out you can smooth off and it really is just going to need less body work in the grand scheme of things versus a mig welder there's very few downsides being that except that you have to get your fitment a lot closer and it's a little bit harder to tig but as far as the final product if you can tig weld i just think it's going to look so much better and i highly recommend doing exterior patch panels with the TIG. I try to run a consistent bead on the whole panel. I try to keep the heat low. I think I'm about 35 to 40 amps on this panel, just working it down. And I, your, any heat you put in a exterior panel, any metal really, is gonna shrink and stretch it. So you're gonna have to go through the idea is to minimize that and create an even heat pattern. That's why I try to do consistent runs when I take weld. So the fender will actually shrink or stretch about the same and I can go through and work it all at once. Here's a different angle looking at the patch on the other fender. I'm welding this one backwards. There's no right direction, just wherever you're comfortable and you could get the most, like I said earlier, consistent run. I like welding in this angle. To me, it's very comfortable. You can see I can feed this in there and for the most part, our heat affected zone doesn't spread out that far. This panel really is gonna need very little work when it's all said and done. We ran out of filler rod right there. Things happen, you're gonna have to stop every now and then. Again, not the end of the world, we'll go back through. There's a solid patch. Here's a look at the two patches. We're gonna use the Pro Spot welder on the edges of it. There's no reason to MIG weld it when we have this machine. You could also see the inner brackets where I welded them in. That was done with a MIG welder and I did leave some of the MIG weld exposed. No one's gonna get in here. This is between the inner wheel well. It keeps it that much stronger. So I cleaned it up a little bit, but again, we're not super worried about, you know, if you pull this off, you'll see a repair and that's okay. We'd have rather have someone see the repair when it's pulled apart and it be a strong repair. With this spot welder, I'm trying to go through and actually add a couple more welds that the factory didn't do, but for the most part, I'm at least welding where the factory did. 
we're now going to go ahead and cut that rusted dashboard out the owner didn't know about this until we pulled the windshield all this was hidden under there whatever they used in the sealant of the windshield and i heard the novas are really bad for this area really rusting out that it just held the moisture and of course just rotted away so the dashboard we have is actually they don't make one exactly that goes into a 70 nova so what i had to do i found we got a 69 camaro dashboard is what it was listed and i'm now going to section it in on the two parts that are exactly the same between the 70 nova and the 69 camaro it's just on the inside where the dashboard comes into it that is slightly different so we cut the part where the dash pad would sit and we're going to plan on butt welding it there and along the front we're going to take the air chisel and run down it luckily nothing's really held on that good with all the rust so we're going to just air chisel it down and remove the old dashboard obviously the vin number is in this dashboard right here we're going to keep it i'm going to give it to the owner and the car is going back together in the same condition it is it's the same car so he's going to get the rivets and he's going to put the the original vin tag into the dashboard moving on we're going to address that firewall that was all dented up i took a hammer on the back side and under the cow we took an extension and started hammering it out once we got out we're coming back in with the ox again and we're going to go ahead the flashing hammer and we're going to shape and smooth out the metal i got a dolly on the back side and i'm just working the metal real slow and i'm basically polishing out any kind of imperfections and then rolling it so it looks natural just like the factory firewall would. And obviously, if you've seen any kind of factory firewall, these aren't perfect, they look like they're crumpled in. So anything here will look a lot better. Once I'm done with the flashing hammer, it actually pushed the metal too far out towards me in the engine bay. So we're gonna take our Wolf heat shrinking disc, and you see we're getting the metal hot, and we're cooling it down with some cold water and that's gonna shrink that metal back in on itself and make this firewall appear flat. This is a continuous process using this stainless steel disc, getting a metal really hot. You see I'm holding the water on it. As it's shrinking back down, you can see the steam coming off of it. And then I'm wiping it clean and dry and hitting it with a hot stainless steel disc again. You keep continuing this process and the disc is great because it's flat and it only hits the high areas that you can focus on. That's why I like using this disc versus a torch. It's not as aggressive and it really focuses on the highs and leaves the lows alone. Really giving you a very nice finish when it's all said and done. Now this disc will also possibly shrink the metal too much. If that's the case, all you do is you go back through and you could just hit it with a hammer and dolly on the back side and that's going to stretch it out so using heat shrinks the metal the hammer and dolly stretches it out so what we did earlier was stretching the metal out towards the front and now we're shrinking it back in flat there's a couple spots especially in the top area that the shrinking disc just isn't going to be able to work with and then that seam we couldn't get behind there and it's so well supported as you see we're going to have to use a stud gun and the slide hammer and we're going to just pull out that seam just to make that look even better the good thing about this seam too i mean we're gonna get it close to perfect but you're going to put seam sealer that's what a factory did on this seam and i know the body man doing this will probably use some self-leveling seam to make it look really slick so we're going to get this thing 99 percent but the little little imperfections here or there we're not super worried about he's going to fix that what i found if you use these slide hammers i'm not really pulling and hitting hard on them it's a lot of little hits many times to just ease the metal coming out you're not shocking it here's the new dashboard about to go in the first thing we have to do is get some 3m bonding adhesive for body panels this is how they done it in the factory when i was pulling it off it's glued right here this is where you can't get the welder but you still want the support on the inner structure for the dashboard what I also didn't show in the video just for the time's sake was 
I took a wire brush underneath where all that rust was. We cleaned it up down to bare metal. We used Osvo on it to convert the metal. We let it sit for 24 hours. We used Weld Through Primer and painted the whole thing. So now we're able to put the dashboard. The hardest thing here is to get the butt weld seam lined up perfectly because we are going to TIG weld it. So again, if you're MIG welding it, not a huge deal. You get it close. I mean, you could fill up a little more gaps in the TIG welding. I wanted a TIG weld here because I really don't want to grind it down. And if anyone ever cut looks behind this, I just want a really clean surface. So. We're buttoning that up. You can see I got a couple clamps on the defrost vents holding the glue. And we're going to let the glue set up before we go ahead and really start welding this thing. This glue is flammable. I, I've welded around it before, but right now once it's screwed down with all the clamps, there's no reason to weld right away. So we're just putting our sheet metal screws in the front to really hold everything and simulate a welded surface. And we'll come back through in a couple hours and start the welding process. Just doing some last minute fine tuning on this thing. And now it's time to weld. You can see I already got the thing tigged up front to rear. Where we're keeping the dashboard on the Nova is in the green a little bit. That's gonna hold the gauge cluster and really where the dash pad lines up. The top area is the same. I made sure I cut it where it wouldn't affect the new VIN tag going in. It will be the original VIN tag, like I said, but the new slot for it. We're doing a, again, we're trying to do a solid run. I'm stopping in between the different holes as my break, and I'm just resetting and getting really comfortable. I think the TIG welding, you get the best welds when you're comfortable. You can move your filler around, you move your torch around, and you can see really well. So you'll see me move around a lot just to try to get comfortable, because it's gonna produce the best results. Every now and then, you gotta get a new tungsten. I think either right there I lost the ball on it or I dipped it in the filler rod. Turning our attention to the front, we're gonna go ahead and use the MIG welder. You can see I got a body hammer and I'm basically just make, making sure the metals tight against each other. We have the screws going front to rear. I'm, re, I'm leaving those in there till everything's welded and I'll go back through and remove those just because everything was tight and I was hammering it down as I was screwing those screws in. I'm working my way like most panels like this from the center towards the outsides so I don't get a pocket where I'm pushing the metal up and I'm stuck with a high spot in the middle. Once I did that, we'll go ahead and do the passenger side. Same thing, just welding up the rosette welds. On this part of the panel, I used the Eastwood Perfect Panel Prep Tool, which has a 3 16 hole punch, and I just run down the side, the whole front of this dash, and that gave me my holes. I then went through up top, and I drilled a couple holes, so I had a little bit more support going up. The factory didn't do it, but I felt like it's just gonna make this install that much stronger and I really like to make these cars a lot better than the original. At this point in the project most of the major fabrication work is complete. We'll go ahead and bolt on the front end and it's going to take a little bit. We got to shim it. I've never done a Nova before but this is how it seemed to work out for me and I got the car in pieces and I've assembled other GM cars of this era so it's very similar. I would decide to put the radiator support on first just to make sure I'm not completely off on my fenders. We left them loose and then what I did with the fenders, I, I grabbed the inner fenders and I put all the bolts in holding the fender and inner fender on the wheel wells loose. We just put them all in there, we kind of bent them into place, I had my son helping me and we just left everything where it will go into the car, but we have some adjustment and we can wiggle it in. Because the main thing, we gotta get this fender and inner fender made it up with the radiator support. So it took a little bit of finessing back and forth to install these at one, one time. I still think it's a lot easier doing it this way than installing the inner fender first and rolling the fender underneath it, especially if this car was in paint. That's the easy way to scratch the panels, I think. This is the way to do it. Just get the two panels bolted together here, leave them loose, and then walk them in. As my son's finishing this up, 
I went ahead and got the other inner fender and I went and put the back body clips on all the spots that we know we're going to need them. We used the brand new pieces. This car came with a, the whole entire chassis bolt kit. I recommend if you're going to do a project like this and you really want a good job, if a car, if a manufacturer sells a chassis bolt kit, body bolt kit, whatever you want to call it, whatever you're working on, buy that. It's not even worth messing with the old rusted out bolts and everything. This was labeled. We knew where everything went and it made so much more sense in saving time on just knowing where everything goes and just walking through this process, especially since I didn't take this car apart and it wasn't bag and tag like we would do on other projects. We're gonna go ahead and walk the fender onto the car. You can see I kinda put the back on first and what I decided to do, we had to kinda pull the radiator support forward a little bit and kinda ease the fender on and just walk it over that lip. It took a second to analyze how we're gonna do this, but once you get the process figured out, it's not that bad. I started up with the top bolt and again I left everything loose got all the bolts kind of in there and started pushing prying and adjusting you have the top bolt the firewall bolt there's one hidden behind the door I'm adjusting and two on the bottom what I like to do I like to focus on the door gaps first and get the fender lined up with the door and then we can go ahead and work our way forward the radiator support this is kind of it fits on or it doesn't. The bolts didn't have that much adjustability. I did hone them out a little bit. Working our way onto the other fender, here's a different angle. I got a little bit better on this fender now that I knew the process, but same thing, we got the back in there. I loosened the front, moved the radiator, fo radiator support forward a little bit, walked the fender on and pushed it back, worked my way to the bottom bolts, and I'm working on the door gap right now. Everything with the body lines on this car lined up, you really focus on the main top body line and the one right above on the lower door to the right before the rocker. You just want to make sure those are key and then the rest of the body line should just flow together. And they really did on this car. I grab the paint stick and I'm profiling the door right now. It's hard to see with your eyes sometimes, so I like to grab a paint stick and just make sure the fender's not bowing out and they're in line front to back, in and out, and everything else. I also use the paint stick to try to reference my gaps. If the paint stick doesn't fit, the gap is too tight. Especially when you add a couple coats of high build primer and everything else to this, the clear coat, the base coat, it just, it starts really closing up this gap fast. The owner bought brand new hood hinges and I know we didn't have the latch and I wanted to do the hood this way since there's no engine. I feel sometimes, we did the trunk if you saw that video, sometimes putting the parts on the car, closing them down and adjusting them inside the engine bay or in the trunk, you really get the fastest adjustment the closest possible. So you see right now I kind of close the hinges and I'm eyeing them up height wise where they want to go. If the springs were on these hinges that wouldn't really be possible. So we're going to do all this, we'll mark them and we can go back through later and put the springs on knowing where the hinges are going to go. This is still a rough guesstimation as we're going to have to put the hood on right now you can see we actually got the car too far forward since I didn't have the front end when I was positioning the car here it kind of got in the way of my cable reel I wasn't thinking about it. usually the cars are facing the other way we're in this position but this car needed most of the back work so I wasn't even thinking the front needed any work so the hood got in the way so no big deal we put the hood a little bit lower under the cable reel just for opening and closing the hood it's not going to affect the adjustment since most of the adjustments are when the hood's closed. Once we got the hood on, I had my wife climb inside the engine bay and we started moving the hood height-wise where we wanted to and adjusted the hinges properly. You'll see later in the video, but once we got it adjusted and fine-tuned, all in all, I was real happy with the way this aftermarket hood fit. I've had some nightmare of hoods. 
the good thing about the Nova is this hood compared to a lot of others is kind of flat and it is really short so I guess the stamping can be a lot closer but even right here this is our first fitment and you see it really does fit really well moving on to the subframe connectors these subframe connectors are global west suspension going from the front subframe they go behind the spring we'll show you in the video in a little bit where they come into on the arch coming up you see i got a jack underneath them i put a bar across we are on a frame jig so the car's level our door gaps are set exactly where we want it so we're confident when we weld these subframe connectors in that everything's going to be held in place at the level we want and profile the way we want it to what I had to do first was to actually tack the front in place against the subframe pulling it down a little bit. I did have to notch the top a little bit because this Nova has the uh, synthetic, they're like a plastic subframe connectors, a solid almost, where the factory bushings, I believe these subframe connectors would have went around it. But you see, I tacked it in the front and then I went and I put the bar underneath with the jack in the center and I jacked up the back. The subframe connectors, they had to be bent a little bit. I did have to put them in my tubing bender and just put a little bit more degree in the back. The arms wanted to stick and they weren't curved up enough on this upswing of the frame rails. A couple of trips back and forth to the bender, the gaps really did line up and just a little tap on the hammer, they fit up on both sides. It's really gonna tie this car together. I like how the subframe connectors, you, usually you see them where they meet up at the front of the frame rail, but these, how they kind of went past it, I think it's gonna really support the car a little bit stronger. So I'd like to hear from the owner how these work out in the future. Now that the subframe connectors are in, we're gonna go ahead and get this car off the frame jig. I already had the two center brackets cut out to install the subframe connectors. So the only thing we got, we got the front brackets you see right there that I'm cutting off that go on the front clip and then one right in front of the subframe connectors where the leaf spring perches are in the rear. So we're going to just remove the tacks holding them on. I got the lift positioned somewhat underneath it. I still have to adjust it. I want to get the cut off so we're not in the way of the lift. You see I also have the lift taped up. The reason we're doing this, I'm prepping this car and we're going to prime the bottom. The owner wants the car all sealed up, kind of like the top. One color, sealed up, protected, so when the body man gets to it, he knows he has a good base to go off of. I worked with this body man. He's really good in the past, so me and him communicated what the best way to do this car, and this is what he wants. This is a product line he uses. We're on the same page. We got our pucks adjusted. I'm just taking the back brackets off right now and now we're just kind of working the frame jig out making sure nothing's caught up and here we go. Cars up in the air. We're officially off the frame jig. I did keep, you'll see in a second, the rear axle on the jig itself. Because I'm painting the car, like I said, it was going to be easier for me to get around everything. He's got a really nice rear end in the car and I didn't want to paint it. So we just uninstalled the rear end. It was only two or three bolts. Left it on the frame jig. It's kind of like a dolly for it to come out. And then you'll see in a little bit, we'll reinstall it back in the car. The whole bottom of this car has been scuffed down with 80 grit, 120 grit, depending on what I was using, and then gone over with a scotch bright, a red scotch bright, just to make sure we got everything scuffed up as per the recommendations of the epoxy primer. Go and take the gun. We're using the black Omni epoxy primer, and we're going through the rear of the car, working every gap rear to the front. As you can see, it's easier with the lift to paint. This is not the ideal situation as for dust and there's stuff around. Luckily, we're painting up in the air that most things want to come down. We're going to do a walk around a little bit. It come out really good for the most part. They're still going to put an undercoating or something on this car over the epoxy so this won't be the finished product. It does look really good and it is going to protect the car and it gets the car in one neutral base to work with it. You're not working with different materials, bare metal and everything else. With this epoxy, I ran one good solid coat, then I went back through after it flashed and went over everything. 
This is what the underneath epoxy looks like. You can see where I taped the firewall to the bottom floor pan. Like I said, there's no real imperfections. Everything underneath this car, minus the frame rails, is brand new. So in general, everything came out looking like a brand new car. You can see it is an epoxy primer that's gone over different surfaces. So you'd see a little bit different hues here or there, but all in all, pretty solid. Here's a shot of wheel well, as you can see the spot welder in play, and then you can see right here a really good shot of the subframe connectors. Where they weld in the back, how they bent, they had those bends in them, I added a little bit more to it, and where they connect to in the front. They tied in really nice, and like I said, I think it's going to be a good solid piece. Another reason we chose the black epoxy primer versus the gray, as they're spraying the black undercoating or whatever they're going to use the chassis paint, if they do miss a spot, it won't be as noticeable as far as the gray. It'll kind of blend in a little bit more. Honestly, this car looks good enough that you could drive this car almost as it is with all the new panels on the black epoxy paint. Looking down from front to rear, see a center hump, everything's straight. It fits on the lift really well. It just all in all, car solid and everything is new. Now that the epoxy is dried, the final steps in this car is going to be put the rear end back under it and get the tires back on the car. We're going to install the bumpers and we got the cowl panel to sandblast, prime out, and finish installing. We rolled the frame jig back under there. This is just a dolly at this point for our rear end. Lowering the lift for the car and we're going to basically attach right now the front spring mounts first. So we're not actually lifting the rear end. We get those three bolts in place. My wife's doing one side, I'm doing the other. This obviously as heavy as this rear end and frame jig was the easiest way to go. We're gonna get the jack under the rear end once both the spring mounts are in place and basically lift up so our shackles are gonna be able to line right up. Once I get it close to where I think it's gonna be, we'll go get the shackles and we just put the two bolts, one top, one bottom on the shackle. You might have to go up and down, adjust the rear end a little bit, but you see we went up a little bit more. Once both sides are done, we can just drop the jack back out after the shocks are put in, because sometimes these axles droop longer than the shocks will. So you see my wife's installing the shocks too. We want to just, the car came in with the shocks on and the springs. So we're gonna send it back out there to the owner in one piece shock springs and everything it pretty much came on like i said you could see in this picture too under the cow hood the cow panel vent cover that front piece up there that's not installed it has been test fit we know there was no filler on it the owner just wants it sandblasted and also in epoxy which makes sense since the whole rest of the car has been done that way too now that I got the shackles and the shocks are done, my wife's going through and just gonna finish tightening all the suspension bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheels and tires on the car just so we can get it on the ground and just get the look of the car finished. Obviously looking at this car, it has two front skinny drag racing tires. It's what he had laying around that still hold air. So this car will get a new set of wheels. I'm assuming what goes to paint. Actually to roll this car around the shop and everything, these little wheels were so much better. They don't rub against anything. You don't fight them if you're trying to turn the car. You know, if anything's got a spool in the back, like I think this thing's got at least a locker in it because you feel the wheels binding a little bit, but you're not fighting those skinny tires as much. We're taking the pads out of the car, last step. The great thing about this lift, you can see I can just move it out of the way, leave the car in place, and drag the lift out. It's really cool and it really helps out. We're going to wrap up the video and the series on the 70 Nova. The car came a long way. I'm really happy with it. The owner's coming tomorrow to pick it up and I can't wait for him to see it. Um, it still has some imperfections. It's going to the body shop to get paint and body work done. So you're going to see little dents, little imperfections here or there, but that's completely normal in a car that basically is all bare metal with no filler and just a thin coat of epoxy to protect it from the elements. Um, you saw we epoxied underneath the car black because that's what the owner is going to do with the chassis and I believe the car is going to be a dark green. I went with a neutral epoxy so the owner can have that choice. Now I'm going to call out one of my work, some of my work and some of my imperfections it happens. The only thing I really you know wish I did and the only reason I didn't fix it is since the car is going to body work the doors will have to come off the car to paint and come back on but really both doors in this car really need to go forward less than a sixteenth of an inch to make them perfect. It's still better 
better than the factory would have done it. But I just think this gap's just a little bit bigger than this side, especially on the gray primer. It really exaggerates the gap. But when the body man does it, he'll be able to work this edge. The car is profiled, so it doesn't have to be adjusted anyway. And what he should be able to do is mark where it is, and then when they reassemble it after paint, just move it forward that little bit, and it'll be perfect. A um, couple of things, like I said, we did. We had to hammer this corner. The two of them just didn't fit right. We installed the fenders. You can see this fender had, it was run down this whole side of the car, so that's why I needed the door skin. And we're able to save the front fender. It needs a little bit of work here, but all this was pushed in a good inch, inch and a quarter. Um, he put the cow hood on. I really like this hood. I think it really makes the look of this car. Um, and where he's going with it, I think it looks awesome. We did put the bumper, the front and rear bumpers on the car. You could see they are in really rough condition, but we know the bumpers fit. When the car goes to get um, body worked and gets finished off, a new set of bumpers I'm sure will be ordered. The hood gaps and everything, they are perfect. We had to work this edge and weld it. It was curving here and hitting. And you see the hood's a little bit tight on this end, but the reason why is I don't have the hood catching the car yet. I have a ratchet strap and the ratchet's pulling it down this way. So when I relieve it, you'll see the hood is gonna come over just a little bit right there. So that's gonna be adjustable, nothing to worry there. I'll show you under the hood and what we got going on. We didn't put the hood springs in the car, same reason for the hood latch not being there. I didn't want the hood, I wanted to be able to close the hood, but, and the, these hinges are so tight and so new, you see the hood does stand up. We epoxied under here, we did the firewall, we fixed the dent, you see all that came out really good. You can see where I taped off from the underneath of the car to the um, firewall. All this stuff, we just left it. It was all brand new. I let them work at the body shop. Everything was perfect there, so I didn't do all that. Um, like I said, everything on the front of this car, the hood, um, a bunch of new parts front to rear. This fender came out really good. It was a good piece to really start with. No one messed with this side of the car. So you see, we did the patches down at the bottom. They really look good. Same thing with this door gap. Like I said, it just got moved back just a hair. But all in all, I mean, we're nickel and diamond, the two gaps. What I, what I like was, you know, we did hinges on the door, expressed it. You could sit there and these doors open up. You feel how solid they are. If you look in here, all the floor pans were done. You see, I did the dashboard, and you can see where I left the weld there. That's going to be covered by a dash pad that's going to go in here and sit on this whole area. So the dash pad will cover all that. The dashboard look, came out really good. This was, uh, like I said, a 69 Camaro dashboard modified into this uh, Nova because they don't make one. Rockers, everything was new. Everything's epoxy. You see what's also nice, the doors, when they close, they close solid, they profile perfect, the gaps look good on both sides, it looks good on the bottom, and then working down the quarters, it's going to need some filler in the quarter seam, we're going to, that's going to be, the body man's going to do that, looking back here, like I said, we got the rear bumper, the car was hit in the rear bumper, you can see, so it's not perfect, but we know it fits side to side. He's got the two patches I did that will need a little bit of filler. They really stand out in the light epoxy. They're not that bad, but nothing that a little bit of filler won't be able to fix. Open the trunk. You see we did the whole trunk floor in another video. The, the primer in this thing isn't perfect. It's got some dust too sitting there laying around, but the, in certain areas you see we did get some dust in the primer. It's not perfect. This car has to be, like I said, it has to be all bodywork scuffed up, sanded before it's top coated with something. So that's why we didn't set up the paint booth and this is more of just a protector if this car does sit for some time before someone gets to it. The trunk is all balanced out. You can see we can just let it go and the trunk closes really nice. Both the trunk gaps are pretty much dead on. 
Looking down the quarter panel, everything's smooth. You can see the body lines, the way they profile, look really good. The car is just, all this is brand new back here. Everything's straight. We were able to salvage the roof, and you can see where we sectioned in the quarters. There's a little bit of weld there, but like I said, it'll be all filled over. This door, same thing. The gap looks good. It opens perfect. Like I said, you see we did the door skins in those videos, and it closes solid. So all in all, that wraps up, wraps up the video on this Nova. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really excited for the next car that's gonna take its place after this leaves in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, we'll get building on that one. I, um, if I remember right, it's in really rough shape too. It's probably worse than you know we initially assessed before, yeah, over the internet. But like our videos, comment, subscribe, tell other people about it, and we'll keep doing these. We really appreciate the support on this, and we'll see you on the next one.